Привет, друзья! Как дела? My name is Fedor, and today we're gonna show you some more Russian food. This time we're gonna show you full meal, full meals and not just the sweets. So we have a list of seven that are on the screen right now and we're gonna buy some of them and then some we're gonna order online later on. So now we're gonna go to the store and buy the first three or four items on the, on the list. Let's go. First four items on the list are vinaigrette, which is a salad, then akroshka, which is a soup, Pirashki, which are like pastries. I'm going to show what pirashki uh, is. And then pilmeni, which is dumplings. So they are all sold at any typical, you know, store. So we're going to go get it now. Мы пошли за продуктами. We're going to get the groceries. And then we're going to come out and, and go to the next station, which is going to be Russian blinchiki, which is pancakes. Let's go to the store and buy the food. Мы купили продукты. We bought the groceries. We found everything that we needed because it's not much really. It's like five or six items. And we're going to share with you what we bought a little later. Next up on our list is Russian blinjik, which is Russian pancakes. And we have a little thing right here, a little kiosk right here. So these right here are called Ruskie Blini. And you can find these all over Russia. But let's find, let's buy ourselves some, some pancakes first and then I'll talk about it. We got ourselves some blini, some pancakes, and as you can see, this place called Ruski Blini is Russian, Russian pancakes, and you can find these all over the country, on the main streets, outside of the subway stations, they are there. So you can go and actually just buy some, some pancakes, some blini for yourself, you don't have to make them. And they make it for you sweet, they make it for you like with meat inside, with no fillings, just, you know, as is, okay? So you can find these on the main streets. We couldn't record inside because they didn't let us record. Нам не разрешили снимать внутри. But it's alright, we're still gonna show you the food, still gonna show you what, it, what it's all about, and yeah, that's it. Back to the house, and we ordered um, two soups, which is borscht and, and um, solyanka from a restaurant, because they're too, too much to make, you know, there's many ingredients, and for you, I'm sure, if you ever come to Russia, you wouldn't want to cook these soups, you would just want to order them as they are. But we're gonna put this aside for a second, and come back to them a little bit later. So in Russia, like in any other part of the world, we have different order of how we eat our things. So first typically come either salads or soups. We only have one salad right here, so we're gonna start with this one. This one is called vinaigrette, okay? Vinaigrette, as you can see, it's red from the, from the beets. And what it has, it has beets, it has potatoes, it has, um, Carrots, it has uh, other things as well. Things that you can grow in your garden, typically. You know, so you can use it, you know, in your kitchen. So let's try it and see what it tastes like. It's pretty good. It has a, a little, like, sour taste to it. But it's fine, you know, it's not too sour. You can eat it as a typical salad. This one is not too fatty. It doesn't have any mayo to it. It's just, it just has some oil, maybe like olive oil in it. So it's not too fatty, it's simply a lot of good vegetables. Next up, we have something called akroshka. And akroshka comes as a salad as well, but what we do is we mix it with kvass, okay? This right here is kvass, and so we mix, mix these two together for us to eat akroshka, okay? So let's do it right now. And we're adding kvass to it. All right, to kind of make it an even substance. And we can eat it like this. But what we also do in Russia is we have sour cream, which is smetana. And we add a spoon of smetana into a kroshka to kind of add it a little more, more flavor to it. Okay, so we add it in, mix it up real good, and only then do we eat it, okay? It's going to be a little uh, carbonated, okay? It's going to have the bubbles coming up because of the kvass, but it's fine, you know? Um, I'm going to show the kvass again right here, so you can probably buy the same one wherever you are in Russia. And it's a pretty good soup. As you can see, it's made from uh, potatoes, it, it's made from sausage, radish, um, some other greens here as well, and, and eggs. So it's a pretty good mixture of good things, of good healthy, you know, vegetables and other stuff like that, okay? And it's of a pretty good quality still. I can still taste a good vegetables, you know, taste. Even though it's, uh, it, 
we bought it at the store, like this salad thing, we bought it at the store, it's still pretty good. Of course, when we have a homemade akroshka, it's much better. Домашняя окрошка гораздо лучше. But this one is fine as well. This one is not too bad. You know, I can still eat it and enjoy. All right, that was the first soup. Сейчас приступим ко второму супу. And now let's get to the second soup. This soup is called борщ. And this is what it, it came in when we ordered it online. It doesn't come, of course, in a regular plate. So it's like a little paper plate. And uh, what's, what's so good about this soup? And why is it so famous? Because it's red. You don't ever see red soups pretty much, right? But it's because it's made from beets. The beets give it this red kind of color. And what we have here is typically we have beef. We have potatoes again, beets, uh, carrots, other things like that in the soup. And we can add some smetana to it as well. And that's how we pretty much do it all the time, okay? So yeah, that's it. It's pretty good. It's tasty. Hmm. The restaurant made it pretty good because the well, beef was very tender. Pretty nice, pretty, pretty sweet. What we can also do sometimes with our soups, we like to also have like a little, we have a little bread and we rub it with the garlic, right? So it can kind of give that um, garlic taste to it and we eat it together with the soup. Because the soup is very liquidy, we can kind of mix it in with some bread to add it some more texture. And this is something very, very common among all households, okay? Not just my household does it. I'm recording right now with, with my friend, right, who's behind the camera now, and he actually suggested this idea because it's like just, I was very sure that it's widespread. It's not just in my family that we do it. So this one is pretty nice, but it's especially good with the soups. But that was borscht. Now let's get to the third soup, which is salanka. Salanka has a weirder taste to it. It's more sour, it's more untraditional kind of soup texture and, and soup taste. For example, it has a pickle in it. It has a pickle, it has olives in there, right? But you, you have a full list of ingredients on the screen right now so you can kind of see what it's made of because I'm not quite sure exactly what it's made of. We don't really make it at home too often. But whenever we go out to a restaurant, I typically like to order salanka because I just like the way it tastes, okay? So let's taste it now and I'm gonna tell you exactly what it tastes like. It has a very bitter aftertaste at the end as well. Like right, right here, I found a piece of lemon. Right here, I found a piece of lemon in, in the soup. So it has a little bitter, more bitter taste to it, which is of course, somebody would love it. And I'm one of them. I love salanka, I love the way it tastes. And overall, I think in Russia, we eat a lot of soup. Just like overall, we eat a lot of soup. We make a lot of soup at home. And it's just something that it's not too common, let's say, in the States. I, I haven't noticed soups being like the, uh, you know, the main, the main dish almost ever. Maybe in some families it is, but not in the majority. But in Russian families, oh my gosh, soup is always, almost always on the table. All right. But now let's get into the first meal, uh, uh, first, first course meals. And the first one, of course, is pilmeni. And pilmeni is beef or some other meat inside of a dumpling right as you can see there's meat inside so right here there's meat inside of it right you can see it and why are pelmeni so good they are easy to make if you just buy the frozen pelmeni right you don't have to actually put them together and put the meat inside they're pretty easy to make just now we bought a full pack of pelmeni we boiled the water and put it in the boiled water for like 20 30 minutes and that's it that's all that you need to make pelmeni and they're pretty easy to eat and they're tasty too. Our pilmeni has butter. У нас пельмени с маслом. We can also add the same smetana, right? We can also add sour cream to it. We can add mayo, we can add ketchup. Можно добавить кетчуп и майонез. We can add ketchup and mayo to it. To kind of, you know, make it your own taste. If you want, if you like it a certain way, you can mix different sauces with it and it goes pretty well with it. This is one of my most favorite things about Russian food is because whenever I'm hungry and I don't want to cook, я не хочу готовить, I don't want to cook, I can just make пельмени very easy and it's tasty and it's filling, just top notch. Next, we have пирожки. And пирожки is a sort of pastry that has a filling on the inside. So we bought three different types. One has 
liver i think it's this one has liver this one has a uh, ground beef with something else and this one has cabbage and чем это было капуста и луком да and this one has cabbage and green onions okay i'm going to bite each of them off and show you the inside and 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 what it looks like so yeah on the inside there is meat there there's meat on the inside and around it there is just pure bread and why is this so good what's so good about this it's because you can make this pirashki you can take them to go somewhere right i used to have them a lot when i would travel uh, during my childhood i would go to different tennis events and my grandma would make pirashki for me my babushka готовила много пирожков she made a lot of uh, pirashki for us and we would take it to go we'll take it for uh, you know on a train and eat it on the road because they really don't go bad too much right as, as long as you eat them in time and they're tasty and they're very very filling because of that bread on the outside so top-notch pirashki like with almost any other pastry that we have in russia these come as sweet and non-sweet you know fillings these are all non-sweet fillings sometimes they would come with apple filling they would come with other preserves filling with them that would give them a sweet taste but these ones are not we just didn't really find the ones that had the sweet filling to show you but these are it and these are pretty good if you don't have a babushka next to you you can always find these at any store and the last one for today is blini so we have th three types of blini we have three different types of blini another name for blini is blinchiki all right we can name them blini or blinchiki it's uh, it doesn't really matter just the way we we, we call them so the first one is just the pancake as is okay if i can take it out of the back the pancake as is without any filling on the inside right it's just the pure pure blin without anything on the inside what we typically do is we can dip it into smetana and then bite it off or we can dip it in zgushonka if you recall from the last video we made zgushonka is condensed milk and it's sweet we can dip it in there and take a bite we can also dip it in some you know uh, berry preserves we can dip it in milk we can dip it in anything that we want really as long as it's smetana smetana or any other sweet kind of sauce we can dip it in and eat it like that or we can have blinli with a filling this one i believe has meat filling let me see yep has a meat inside and so it's going to be something similar to pirashki, right, with the meat inside of them. And it's just pretty good. You know, it's it's good to eat these because you don't get messy with them. You just eat it, like, with your hands and it's, it's just a lot of fun. And the last two are the sweet ones. This one has zgushonka, the um, varionka, actually, the boiled condensed milk in it with, with nuts, okay, which is pretty good. And this one has cottage cheese and strawberry preserves so both of them are sweet so we can also make blinchiki to have a sweet filling which is always nice to have it's always good to eat them and they go so well together if you ever if you're from from london you, you probably know about the pancakes about the uh, cr uh, crepes i think they're called it's kind of a similar thing to crepes in russia but these are traditional russian you know um dessert or traditional uh, other russian stuff that we eat uh, when sweet or not sweet i'm gonna take a bite of this because it's gonna be very tasty so yeah this one has varionka on the inside with some nuts there i'm not gonna bite this one because i'm already full i don't want to overeat and i, I don't want to get uh fat over here today with you but i hope that you got some idea of russian food is all about i hope that you have in have gotten inspired to try some of these things of these things whenever you are in russia these are some of my favorite foods when i come back to to russia to eat and maybe go to a restaurant and order these and they're very tasty so if you want to ever get them i recommend that you do if you ever want to order these at any store restaurant and not have any problem communicating to russians then join our 30 day speaking challenge which starts september the 3rd you can find all the details under me right now or the first link in the description join if you want to communicate well in russian speak russian and understand russian spoken language all right check it out it's going to be an amazing amazing program and you'll take a lot from it see you then